Pulp Writer's Scrapbook. Hi, I'm Gary Luvisi, and this time we've got something a little different, and I think it's pretty awesome. What we have here is uh, the scrapbook of pulp writer uh, Ed Doherty, who also wrote as Ned O'Doherty. He was a uh, he was born in 1890 and, and died in 1975, and he was a uh, newspaper man in uh, New York and uh, Chicago, and also a uh, customs inspector, a, a inspection agent who worked for the federal government. He was the editor of the uh, Customs Inspection magazine, but he also wrote pulp stories. He wrote for Liberty, started writing for Liberty magazine in 1929, and he wrote for a lot of pulp magazines, um, Crime Busters, Shadow, uh, Street of Smith Detective Stories, uh, Private uh, pri uh, Federal Agent, and a lot of other uh, magazines. So we're going to, this is his personal um, scrapbook. Had his, some, some interesting things in it, some letters and things. Also, um, some original manuscripts. I'm not sure if the stories, uh, all the stories have been in the here have been published. Some of the uh, manuscripts are original type scripts uh, from probably the 30s and 40s. Uh, some of them are uh, either first or second uh, um, uh, carbon. Carbon, carbon copies. Uh, usually a writer would make uh, two carbons, uh, sometimes just one carbon. Um, so there's uh, is carbon copies, original carbon copies of his manuscripts here, and other, other interesting material. I published one of his stories in Hard Boiled a while back, a few years ago, um, and I've always thought of doing this as a pulp writer scrapbook, uh, putting the stories all together into a book, and then, of course, writing something about his life and... Uh, you know, what, what I've been able to find out about it. But um, this is something that uh, me and my wife have always, my wife Lucille, and I have always uh, wanted to do uh, something about. Uh, it was, it was uh, always a little difficult finding information about him, but uh, we found out quite a bit. So whatever we have, we're going to sh share with you now so you can take a look. So I'm going to just take, put my glasses on, take a look. This is the way he had it. He had it in a... Uh, in a big binder, this is actually a, a binder for uh, horse breeders, and he just what he did was just use the pages to put his own material in. This is a scrapbook. He might have changed it from this to that. And here we have one of the one of his original stories, and um, this is a story that I published in Hard Boiled Number no. Forty, um, May of two thousand nine, and it's the Stumble Bum Kid. And you can see it's a it's a uh, carbon copy, original carbon copy um, typescript, uh, four thousand words. And Ned's address was um, was seventeen seventy seven Troy Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. And that's where he lived for for many years, and that's where he wrote from. Uh, he had uh, one novel, and at this time thirty five or thirty six short stories published. And we're going to look through some of the material now. To give you an idea, this is how he put them in. And uh, this is a uh, blood is thicker than water. And he wrote as Ned O'Doherty. That was his pseudonym. But he was uh, he was um, Ed J. Doherty or Ed Doherty. And this is uh, one of the stories. So like I say, I don't know if some of these have been, I'm sure they, some of these have been uh, published reprinted uh, in pulp magazines, but uh, maybe maybe not all of them. Um, another one. I mean, it's amazing. There's two. There's two in here. This is the way he put them together. This is uh, The Lethal Chamber Net, whoops, by Ned Doherty. And that's a 3,500 word story. And Goodbye Mutt by Ned Doherty. So this is the, this is the original types uh, manuscript typed on the nice quality uh, paper that he would submit to a publisher. And we'll show you some of the letters from, uh, from the publishers. 
Uh, Ned also had two books. He had a lot of a lot of pulps published, and um, and two books. Uh, one one book published, one novel, the corpse that wouldn't the corpse who wouldn't die. And here's um, just to show you these. There's the two books. It's the American Handy Book, and this is Handy Book number forty nine from the 1940s. And this is the Australian Star Book number 329 from the 1950s, which reprints that. So that's The Corpse Who Wouldn't Die. That was basically his only novel as far as as far as I know. So I wanted to show you those just to, before I forgot. I got a lot of things to show you and it's kind of a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. This is Ride Ride Me Cab, Ride, Ride Me cab, uh, Cabby. He wrote stories about cab drivers and um, a lot of a lot of uh, fiction and uh, true fi true crime about uh, customs inspectors. This is a this kind of interesting. This is a uh, an outline for a novel that he wrote. What he did, he took the uh, the first chapter, the first page of each chapter, chapter one, chapter two, and uh, wrote the amount of words on them and then wrote some notes about each chapter and so it goes up all the way to he was trying to get to a seven seven thousand seventy thousand word novel and that's what he had put together and another story murderers never know by Ned or Doherty and he's always from Brooklyn that Brooklyn address on 1777 Troy Avenue Another story, Billy's dad. A couple of other stories. This is a uh, humorous uh, two-page short story, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun story. Fun story. Television would help. Um, and then there's uh, another one. I'm off pleasure cruises. Uh, Uh, just a, I'm off pleasure cruises. When Don Aurea first made a play for my wife, I should have hauled off and socked him one in the jaw, one that would have flattened him good and proper. If I had done that, I certainly would have avoided all the headaches and heartaches that came to my way later on. But I didn't, so perhaps I deserved what I got. And this is how he's, he always had good openings for his stories. Really, uh, really cool openings. Just leave it. We'll put it away later. Yeah, it's just so, it's hard to get. There's so many things to show here. They're really cool. Um, this is another outline. Actually, this is a, uh, a synopsis for a novel. Uh, the noose hangs high and uh, wasn't, wasn't finished. And uh, I was thinking yeah, about. Well, that's a little fragile. Just yeah, I was thinking of. I was thinking of finishing that novel. But what I wanted to show was also, says trouble for a killer. It was uh, the story with a, with a letter from Standard Magazines by from Leo Margulis, who was the editor. And it's actually a rejection letter. It says uh, trouble for a killer must go back. It just doesn't seem a good possibility for our detective books. Also, the feud between Billings and Townsend seems a bit overdrawn. So this is from Standard Magazine. This is July 1940, and it's signed by Leo Margulies, the editor. Um, Trouble for a Killer. Nice 6,500-word story. We have this in, in here with it. Kept the uh, kept the, um, the rejection letter from Standard Magazines. Just going page by page, more st more stories. There was one I wanted to read, um, which I'm not sure where where it is. I wanted to read to you. Then there's also 
He, he wrote for uh, quite a few magazines, uh, not only The Pulse, but he wrote for uh, Liberty Magazine and he wrote for uh, Ken Magazine, which was a prestigious magazine. Here he got the cover story uh, and the cover uh, illustration, you know, U.S. Customs agent, um, nothing to declare, that's his story. And the interesting thing about this magazine, issue of Ken, this is a full magazine, is it's stamped. Um, now, I can't read that. So this is an unfinished copy. Yeah, unfinished copy. Um, Bound from trial run, run sheets. sheets. Advance of publication. It will be followed by a finished copy for advertising checking purposes. Yeah, so this is what they sent him. Um, basically to, to check his story and um, this is some of the few of the letters from Ken some of these are interesting um, just uh, they uh, they tell him about the story regarding he, he wrote to the magazine regarding my article Got to reply to the letter under yeah to, the, to this letter from Ken where they wanted to publish his article they paid him a hundred they talk about reprint rights and uh, they also talk about the, uh, they, he was paid $150 for the article. So these are all from Ken. Then there's another article, I mean, another letter here, which is interesting, from um, Sanders and Conroy, his, his, his literary agent from uh, May 24, 1938. And um, basically they're, they're talking about uh, on his sales. And he says, heartiest congratulations on those sales of yours. Cracking both Crime Busters, which is a very good pulp, and The Shadow, which also pulp, surely puts you in solidly with Nanovic. Nanovic was the editor of, uh, of those pulps. Uh, but even that pales before the satisfaction you must feel in selling your article to Ken magazine. I know you got a kick out of that, and a nice check too, I hope. Uh, sincerely, Philip Conroy, that was his agent. You get some letters there from people. Here's an interesting one. From uh, to Edward J. Doherty, editor of the New York Customs Inspector, which is a magazine. He was he worked in the United States Barge Office in New York, and this is from the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, United States Department of Justice, Washington D.C. This is 19 October 1938, from the office of J. Edgar Hoover. Actually, he wrote to uh, wrote back to Ned. Now. Or, or Edward, and um, the letter is uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation, October 6, 1938, J. Edgar Hoover, John Edgar Hoover, director, and in the ab and it's actually written by his assistant director, so he explains, in the absence of the director from Washington, I wish to acknowledge receipt of the October 38 issue of the New York Customs Inspector uh, Magazine, official publication of the United States Customs Inspectors Association. It's very kind of you to make this issue of the publication available to Mr. Hoover, and I know that he will appreciate your thoughtfulness and courtesy in commenting in your booklet upon his recent article in Liberty Magazine. It will be a pleasure to call your booklet to his attention upon his return to the city. With best wishes and kind regards, uh, for the director, uh, Harold Nathan, Assistant Director of the FBI. So this is 1938, a letter from the FBI to Ed Doherty who was, uh, in the real world, was a uh, customs inspector who uh, was involved in some pretty interesting cases of, uh, of, of uh, criminal activity and um, wrote about those cases in, uh, in magazines like Liberty, and he used them as, um, in, you know, uh, background and material for his uh, pulp magazine stories. Now, here's, we're getting to the pulp stuff. Here's Ed, a couple of pictures of him, and just some of this is this is what he made up. Um, so he, you can see that this was taken from a page out of a, and this one here too, they were taken out of a page. So so maybe that black um, scrapbook that I sh the cover that I showed you at the beginning of this presentation was originally a, a different scrap, you know, the original scrapbook, and then he, after many years, put it together into this, uh, this kind of binder for, for protection. But this shows some of the pulps that he worked, had stories in, 
and Ken Magazine. And I, while we're here, I'm just going to show you a few of the pulps in the covers just now. So this uh, Crime Busters from 1930, February 1939. And the interesting thing about this uh, story is uh, there's just so many uh, people in it. W.T. Ballard, Maxwell Grant, Lester Dent, Steve Fisher. Uh, so he's, he was in with good, good company. Uh, Street and Smith's Ma uh, Mystery Magazine, November 1939. Another... Uh, these a lot of the thing is with the with these pulps. These are uh, usually fairly pricey uh, collectible pulps. There are a couple of things. Is there from 1938, 39, 40? The pre-war, just before the war, and a lot of these were destroyed in the paper drives. But also, there uh, he was in with good company. I mean, he had uh, he had a lot of good uh, authors in uh, Maxwell Grant and, and different people that were. In these magazines, this is Mystery, Street and Smith Mystery Magazine, uh, April 1940. Uh, he was in that, he's in this one. Um, November 1940, Street and Smith Mystery Magazine. Uh, Clues, Detective Stories, uh, September 1940. Uh, and you can see he's on the cover, the the Death Horde, by Ned O'Doherty under his pseudonym. But up, just above him is uh, Victim for Vengeance, Carol John Daly, um, Race Williams uh, story. So uh, he's in good company. Um, another one of his pulps is uh, Dell published uh, Federal Agent uh, pulp, October. Uh, 1936. Originally it was Public Enemy, they changed it to Federal Agent. And another issue of March 1937, Federal Agent. And he has a story in here. And there's also Hugh Cave, uh, Frank Gruber in here. And last but not least of the pulps is uh, very expensive one. This is trimmed, otherwise we could never afford it. But it's the Shadow Magazine from uh, July 15th. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what the date is. Uh, 1938. 1938. So these are the, the pulps, just some of the pulps that uh, Ed Doherty had stories in. And we're going to continue going through the scrapbook. It's interesting that he he put all these together. He cut out um, cut out some of the titles, some of the uh, that, he, that he was in with uh, different people. Emil Emil C. Pepperman, and then there's Ned O'Doherty, and then there's Maxwell Grant, Lester Dent, Kenneth Robeson, Theodore Tinsley. I mean, these are all you know Frank Gruber. These are all big writers of that time, and uh, and then there's. You know, Ned O'Doherty and Ed Doherty published a lot of, he, he, um, he cut out the, uh, the titles of his stories, U.S. Customs Inspector, Ken Doherty, uh, Ned O'Doherty, U.S. Customs Inspector, and um, he probably used that pseudonym because he was still working at Customs and it was probably better not to have uh, his name, uh, even though it was very close not to have his actual name um, associated with, you know, because he worked for the government at that time. Uh, a lot of people did that. Um, and he also used to take covers from the pulps and, and just rip, you know, not, not use the cover art, but just the title and then just put his, you know, the contents. So that was, that was actually, that is actually this magazine, and here's Crime Busters from 1939, and there's the people that were in, W.T. Ballard, Lester Dent, Arthur J. Burks, Maxwell Grant, who created The Shadow, Steve Fisher, Norman A. Daniels, and Ned O'Doherty. I mean, he's in with top-ranking company in those days. 
and he he's funny he cut out he, he didn't want to, he didn't care about the usually the uh, illustration on the uh, on the cover of the magazine but he just put the the name of the magazine and then he he put his his uh, you know what, what was pertaining to him and this is interesting this is something I want to show you he had a uh, formula pulp formula for a 6,000 word detective yarn he called them yarn y-a-r-n a detective story and um, this is how he would write the stories he would pick one of these four elements and that would be the opening then the first 1500 words you'd have to have one of these five different the first one is first line or, or as near thereafter as possible introduce the hero and get him with a fistful of, get him into a fistful of trouble hint at a mystery a menace or a problem to be solved something the hero has to cope with so that's one of his uh, 1500 word first opening sentence opening uh, paragraphs in 1500 words then the second 1500 words of the novel uh, more grief to the hero uh, other, other things that he would do the third part of the of the book of the novel uh, son, short story 1500 words and he'd have these uh, uh, this uh, explanation and then the final 1500 so this would be like a 6,000 word story and he'd break it down into four 1500 word parts and he'd have you know be able to mix and match basically uh, his his uh, formula for uh, for writing stories it's pretty interesting that he uh, that we have that and that that was something that he used on all of these stories and here's some more of the stories from uh, pulp magazines federal agent march 1937 um, Waterfront Patrol. He did a lot of uh, a lot of uh, stories with customs on the uh, on the piers and the docks, with ships, shipping, things being brought in uh, illegally into ports, that kind of thing. Um, federal agent, October 1936. It comes out murder. This is his. Um, of the story. Um, bring, um, bring them in. Bring them in. It's hard to read upside down from June 1937. This is the, what did I say, the feds? Yeah. Feds. G Man versus Crime. Uh, here's, something, here's something interesting. Um, so I showed you the before the issue of Ken magazine um, that uh, from 1938 and uh, that has of course he got the cover this is also another one of those um, uh, unfinished, un copies. unfinished copies of bound uh, bound sheets and he got the cover for that with the uh, Jersey Custom Inspector cop and uh, nothing, nothing, to nothing to declare and um, along with this is the uh, customs inspection agent badge for New York. That was uh, maybe his his badge or, or what, what his badge looked like. Or you know, maybe this is what he sent, um, you know, Ken Magazine, the illustrators, just to give him an idea. But that was in here in his in his uh, book scrapbook and the other interesting thing is that he had uh, these cards made up for the corpse who wouldn't die a new murder mystery novel by ed doherty uh, mystery house two dollars so it was a two dollar hardcover and then it was reprinted in the uh, handy book paperback that i showed you earlier and then also reprinted in the australian digest that i showed you but this is his advertising card for the um, for the hardcover novel, this is his, his only novel, as far as we know. There are a lot, a lot of stories, and here again, um, more material that he had. Uh, he only <laughs> he only uh, cut out the the titles of the magazines, and then you know something that had to pertain to him. 
left out everything else. I don't know why, but that's what he did. Except on this one, on clues, which this is a issue we don't have, but he put out the whole the whole cover, Street and Smith Clues magazine from January 1940, and um, here's his story, Murder Can't Wait, Ned O'Doherty. Now, some of these stories in the pulps here that we, and here's the inside of that pulp. So basically, he cut up the pulp, he, which is, you know, writers do that, but, uh, you know, pulp collectors hate it. You know, he uh, took the cover off, he took the contents page, which is his name, and he took the uh, opening page with, uh, you know, with his name again for his story. He could have had another one. Yeah, he probably did. I mean, he probably had two or three copies, you know, of each one. A lot of writers do. You need writers do need file copies because they have to give them to publishers for reprints. Uh, and uh, he had some of these things were reprinted, but um, it's interesting because uh, some of these stories in the uh, binders that I had in here showed you earlier of stories. Um, those are the original uh, manuscripts for some of these stories, or they're the original um, carbon copy copy manuscripts of the stories. So here's another one, Street and Smith Mystery Magazine, February 1940. He's in here. The Feds. I love that G-Men versus Crime. And a little bit of Ned Doherty, U.S. Customs Service. So there's some really cool stuff in here. This is a... Uh, Actually, a uh, newspaper, uh, clipping. News, newspaper clipping from uh, 1937, and this is probably, that might be Ned. Yeah, this is Doherty. This is, that, that might be him right there. And they're talking about capturing a famous criminal, uh, which, uh, Two-Gun Tommy Burke, the Brooklyn bad man, was back in New York today in bracelets. So they had that, that gangster guy, they, they, I never heard of him, but he must have been, in his day, a uh, pretty bad gangster, and Dougherty was uh, involved in capturing him, or at least bringing him in. This is a, so this is true crime. This would be something that he would use, you know, that he was involved in as professionally as a custom agent, um, and then he would use this maybe as a, as a basis of a story. Take a guy like Two-Gun Tommy Burke, you know, and use him in the story, which uh, which is what a lot of uh, crime fiction authors do, take uh, true crimes that happened and, and, and uh, use them as a basis for stories. Here he wrote for The Shadow, which was uh, which was a very good, uh, prestigious pulp. More stories, Traffic and Murder, The Feds, And uh, I think that's about it. But I think that's that's a cool, very cool, uh, you know, actually awesome material to find from a pulp magazine writer. He was born in 1890, died in 1975. He was writing during the heyday of the pulps in the th 20s, 30s, and 40s. Um, he wrote for a lot of a lot of uh, uh, nonfiction uh, articles on customs inspection and true crime in uh, Liberty magazine, and he wrote a lot of stories in the pulps. Uh, and the book on him and his his uh, best pulp work would be like uh, I think phenomenal. Um, maybe someday we'll do it. I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody will be interested in it, in doing it. But um, he did publish two books that. Uh, the Corpse Who Wouldn't Die, two uh, novels, uh, well, one novel. Uh, there's only two editions that I know of, other than the, uh, the, hard the cover. Uh, hardcover. Yeah. So these reprint the hardcover. This is Australian and this is uh, American. There might be a Canadian Harlequin on this too, but uh, he did. He did a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of stories. He did a lot of work. His 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 work was thought of. Uh, highly by uh, editors and um, he was in a lot of prestigious magazines writing with uh, top-notch top 
top-notch authors, and uh, like Lester Dent, uh, Maxwell Grant, Frank Gruber. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, yeah. I mean, there's just so many, so many people. So anyway, I just hope you enjoyed this look at a pulp writer's scrapbook. Uh, Ned Doherty, or or actually Ed Doherty, or Ned O'Doherty, as his uh, pseudonym. Um, and uh, if you did, give us a thumbs up and a like. And uh, thanks for looking and letting me share this uh, unique and I think awesome um, piece of history, pulp magazine, writing history with you. Thanks a lot.